EpiPens, you may be familiar with them. They are the life-saving devices used to prevent anaphylactic shock. They made headlines this week for the 400% increase in cost that they have experienced in recent years, and I am not actually reading that. That's not a typo, that's 400%. So 400 agencies in New York are stepping away from EpiPens for a more affordable option. They are participating in what's known as the Check and Inject New York pilot program. Joining me in the studio tonight to tell us more about this, we have Dr. Michael Daly, he's from Albany Medical College, and David Gardner, Assistant Director of Operations with Mohawk Ambulance Service. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to see you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, this basically hit sort of the mainstream this week, really. I mean, I know um, experts in the field have known it for a while that there's been a slow increase that sort of accelerated it in, in recent years. Uh, but now everybody's talking about it and there could be congressional inquiries and the company's on the defensive. Um, but what exactly, doctor, caused this um, phenomenon? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. The pricing for drugs is a, is a complex <coughs> situation. Um, epinephrine itself is a relatively unstable molecule, and this is a device um, that's going to need to be replaced yearly. But the actual cost increasing from what was about three hundred, no, sorry, about thirty-five dollars per in auto injector um, around two thousand to today costing well over four hundred and fifty dollars per individual auto injector mm. um, is something that really caught everybody by surprise and nobody's quite sure why. So uh, there's a number of things. I mean, first of all, uh, not everybody not everybody's paying it out of pocket. I mean, obviously. Now, if you're going to be uh, ambulance service, I think each of you uh, of your ambulances has at least want two of these. Is that yes, right? Yes, we, we have because there's two different doses for the auto injectors. There's an adult dose and a pediatric dose. Each one of our ambulances carries uh, two doses for adults and two doses for children. So you buy them gross, I would assume. Yes. You buy a lot of them. Okay. Yes. So some people have insurance and they're covered to a certain degree. I, I saw a figure that people are paying somewhere in the neighborhood of about $70. But if you're not covered, that's problematic. Also, schools have to have them. So that's also a problem. And you need more than one. If you're an allergic individual, highly allergic, you really want one like on your person and then in places where you're going to be a lot, right? Yes. Is that right? You want to make sure that you have one wherever you're going to be. If you have a child that's allergic, you want to make sure there's one at the facility they're going to be spending most of their time. Um, camps, for example, mm -hmm. um, schools. Um, so this can lead to individual families spending a significant amount of money on these epinephrine auto injectors. And the company is saying, we're not going to do anything about this price. Um, it's about the market. It's about lack of competition. There's, there's one company that's being uh, focused on. But there's only two of them that are manufacturing them right now, is my understanding. EpiPens are so universally known. That's actually the commercial name of the thing, that a lot of doctors are just prescribing them and not mm -hmm. even thinking, like, oh, maybe I should look for an alternative. Uh, and the company says, well, we'll help people. We'll <coughs> increase the number of assistances that we provide, but we're not going to bring the price down. Right. So I understand the chair. Sorry. No, I understand the, the chair of the company um, actually in, mentioned that they are going to increase the assistance they provide to schools, increase the assistance they provide to families in covering the copays. But that's not really going to affect the bottom line for EMS agencies who have to be prepared to take care of their patients. So instead, there is an alternative, which is an injectable, correct? Yes. Not a self-injectable, which is what the EpiPen is. Basically, correct. just stab yourself with it effectively, uh, but an actual syringe. Is that is that true? And they're cheaper? Correct. They're, they're much much cheaper than the, the auto injectors and the EpiPens. Um, typically, the scope of practice for the EMT is, a, is at a basic life support level. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically, they could take the EpiPen without much uh, training other than the manufacturer's direction and administer or assist the person who was having the allergic reaction in administering it themselves if they didn't have their EpiPen readily available. Got it. Um, what the check and inject program does, um, it allows us to keep the epinephrine on hand much, much more reasonably priced um, and it allows us to increase our scope of practice at the BLS level to allow us to draw the, draw the medication up from a vial into a syringe. Mm. So rather than having the epi in the auto injector, it's, it comes in a little vial and each kit comes with a syringe. It must take a little a longer needle. to administer though. Um, 
a, s a very small amount of time longer because you basically have to, the auto injectors, you could go right through your, your pants. Yeah. Um, with these, due to the, the sensitivity of the needle and the, and the delicacy of it, you just simply have to make an opening in, in your pant leg, mm -hmm. in the patient's pant leg to mm -hmm. all access. Mm -hmm. uh, you clean the site um, to make sure that you make it as, as clean and as sterile as possible sure. before you're going to you know, administer the medication. So and then th a few seconds longer to draw it up into the vial. Right, but we're also talking, a person in anaphylactic shock, I mean, uh, seconds matter, obviously. Th this is a pilot program that, that Rochester's running, the University of Rochester, is that right? This is a, a pilot project actually with an interesting history. Um, about five years ago, uh, folks from the town of Colony and <coughs> Mohawk Ambulance got together to start building out the idea behind this pilot. Um, we created educational materials, um, and then with the growing opioid crisis, mm -hmm. um, we had to step and put that to the side in order to address the opioid crisis first. Um, we then resurrected the educational materials, um, working with the University of Rochester and Jeremy Cushman and his team out there. We were able to put together the Check and Inject New York program, building on successes that had already <coughs> been demonstrated in King County, Washington. So how many uh, ambulance services are using this right now? Currently, there are 460 ambulance services across New York State that are using the Check and Inject program, um, and there are about 26,000 EMTs that have been trained to administer epinephrine this way. But this is not an option for your average person as opposed to EpiPen. In other words, this is a more affordable option for you guys, and you have to have them, and that's great that you have them available for people, but it's not going to solve the problem of the high cost for your average consumer. I agree, Liz. I think it's this is one of those things where if I take professionals and I expand their scope of practice, whether those professionals are paid or unpaid, um, we can work distinctly training on this product and make sure that people can handle that well. A mom or a child in time of crisis trying to do this would be difficult. I'm sure there are some that would handle it well and some that would find it difficult. Couldn't a school nurse do this though? Um, I can see absolutely no reason the school nurse couldn't do that. The way the legislation right now is written, I believe it requires auto injectors mm. for um, school nurses. So is there something that is needed in order to grow this program and make it more available to people? Because it sounds like it's working for you guys uh, at Mohawk, and it sounds like it's working for these other ambulance services. Do you need more funding? Everybody needs more funding. <laughs> Everybody always needs more funding. Actually, this is an interesting one because we project that if this becomes the scope of practice for basic EMTs across the state, um, depending on how you do the math and if the ambulance service is being um, as, um, as conservative as Mohawk with two auto injectors in adult and pediatric size mm. being replaced by um, two of the check and inject kits, you, we could be saving between about four and a half and ten million dollars across the state for those individual EMS agencies. Over time? Over, really over the first year. Wow. So that's money that can really be put into other ways of taking care of our patients. Um, and I think the most single most important thing that can happen would be that when we report our data out to the State Emergency Medical Advisory Committee, that information goes back to the Commissioner of Health, mm. and the Commissioner of Health has the ability to expand the scope of practice for the basic EMTs. We did this recently with naloxone for opioid overdoses, yep. um, and the Commissioner was very rapid at, at reviewing that data, and this could be the same sort of situation. So we're out of time, but just very quickly, have, David, have you done this? Have you administered, had the opportunity to administer one of these to somebody? Uh, I, no, only, only in training with the check and inject. Has kit. anyone from Mohawk actually yes. used it? They have, yes. and we, it's been we've successful. Had, we've had successful administrations of the of, uh, check mm -hmm. and inject program so far. Well, uh, this is a story, obviously, that has got a lot of national attention, as I mentioned, and we'll continue to report on. And I thank both of you for coming in uh, today to talk to us. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Thank you.